In this video for PokerNews.com, we have a hand featuring Ashley Sleeth. She has an excellent video blog. I definitely recommend you checking it out at youtube.com slash Ashley Sleeth. She plays mostly cash games, although she also plays some tournaments every now and then. She actually won a circuit ring recently. And today, we're going to take a look at a hand where she is playing deep in a... How big is this? $560 buy-in tournament at Bellagio, where she is put in a very nasty spot on the river when she gets jammed all in. Let's get right to it. And as the break clock starts, we're dealt 9-7 of hearts in the cutoff, and we open to 4K. The big blind is one of those good German pros. He defends, and the flop comes 8-5-4, two clubs and one heart. He all right, let's talk about what does a good German pro mean? It's important to realize that just because someone is from another country does not necessarily mean they are definitively good at poker, even if they are, you know, someone who looks like they should be a good poker player. A lot of people, um, they're just okay at poker. So let's keep that in mind. A lot of people are just okay at poker, despite the fact that they probably win money. We're also playing a $560 buy-in tournament. So it's not like we're playing against the highest stakes crushers in the world. So that's also worth noting. Let's keep that in mind as we move forward. Checks to me and I gotta be honest, I kind of tripped myself up here. I thought, I think he started the hand with about 30 big. So I was like, oh man, he's gonna check raise this flop a lot versus my C-bet and I don't wanna get check raised. So I checked it back. But looking back on it, it's like, I have nine high, I have a gutter and a backdoor flush draw. I'm not really giving up that much by bet folding on this flop. So in the future, I'll be C-betting this spot. All right, let's talk about if you should C-bet the nine, seven on the eight, five, four board. As you are more and more likely to get check raised, you should be way less inclined to bet this type of hand. And this type of hand actually does have pretty good equity, right? If we turn a six, we're thrilled. If we turn a nine, we're pretty happy. We turn a flush draw, we're in great shape. We can also bluff on a random ace or king turn. So this is a hand we really do not want to get check raised off of. And as your opponent's stack gets shallower and shallower, they're gonna be more inclined to check raise and either check raise all in or check raise small and just put you in a dicey spot with a lot of their range. But if your opponent's going to be more inclined to check and call, then like betting's fine, right? And if your opponent has nothing, they'll just fold immediately. So this is a spot where when I'm playing live poker, I do my best to make some sort of a live read as if my opponent's going to continue or not. If I think at all they're going to be way more inclined to just check and fold, then I'm definitely going to bet. If my opponent generally has not shown a tendency to check raise the flop at all, I'm definitely going to continuation bet. So... These are really things I'm considering in this spot, but you really just, you really don't want to get check raised in this scenario. And you got to realize everyone is going to check raise sometimes, but if they are check raising a ton, that's really bad for you. If they're check raising with only the nuts and nut draws, it's not that big of a deal. You can just bet and then get out of the way if they put in a big raise. And if they put in a tiny raise, you can continue. This time, check, check though. Let's see the turn. Turn was an eight of hearts. So now we pick up a flush draw. He bets 5K. I'm not going anywhere. I make the call. The river is a queen of hearts. We kind of breeze through the turn spot. Um, some people may think that we should consider raising in this scenario, but I definitely think we should not because if you think about who has more eights and who has more straights, it's definitely the opponent, right? So whenever you completely lack the nut advantage and your opponent does not lack the nut advantage, they could easily have all the nuts. This is a spot where you want to have almost no raising range, especially in position. So very, very easy call. And, you know, Ashley Breeze right through it because it is an easy call. Uh, but I think a lot of people in the spot go to, all right, I have no showdown value, but I have a draw. Maybe I should put in a raise, but definitely not in this scenario. So definitely just call when the opponent bets the turn. So somehow we find ourselves with a flush here on the river and he bets the same size. He bets 5K on this river. Mm. Or maybe he's trying to go for thin value with something like pocket sixes. I wasn't really sure what to make of this, but I do have a flush. I need to get value from it. I make it 20K. He does something a little surprising. He jams all in for about 115K total. All right, I'm gonna put all of you to the test in this scenario. Your opponent bets small on the river. You put in a solid value raise, and then they rip it in for a whole ton of chips. So look, Ashley's in a horrible spot with her flush, right? I wanna ask you, what is the worst hand that you would call this all in with, keeping in mind that you actually don't have a whole lot of the nut hand. So you can't say I'd only call it all in with a full house here, unless you actually have some full houses. If you have no full houses, that might be a problem. So think about what your range looks like in the spot. Pause the video and let me know in the comment section down below what the worst hand you would call this 
all in with is. This is a nasty, nasty spot. Why don't we hear what Ashley says first? I have about 130 in my stack, 140. So if I make this call and I'm wrong, I'm down to about 10 big blinds and have just like punted away my stack in glorious fashion. So I start thinking, okay, what are his bluffs? What are so Ashley says here that she would have punted away her stack in glorious fashion. Now I want to talk about that, that concept a little bit because whenever you call in this scenario, sometimes you're going to win and sometimes you're going to lose, assuming your opponent has some bluffs in their range. Whenever you lose, don't beat yourself up so much. Sometimes you're gonna make big calls and you're gonna be wrong. That said, most people don't bet small in the river and then jam it whenever you put in a decent sized raise. So uh, maybe this would be a punt to call. Let's move forward. Or his value hands. Starting with the bluffs is a little easier for me. So I'm trying to go through it and I really couldn't think of much. I get it. We don't have boats here. We've, we are incredibly capped after checking back that flop. Still, he has to find some bluffs here to do this with again. So she very quickly points out the fact that we don't actually have all that many nut hands, right? Because if we did have a set on the flop, we'd probably just bet it. If, um, I mean, maybe we could have pocket eights and check back the flop, but that's one combination of hands, right? So we really don't have a whole lot of nuts. Even if we check back pocket fives and pocket fours, still only seven nut hands. So we have very, very few nut combinations in this spot, which is definitely worth noting because... If we just had a bunch of full houses, then it'd be fine to fold all your flushes from a GTO point of view. But given we don't have those hands, our best hands that we could have are going to be hands like what? I mean, you can find some nut hands. There's almost none, right? I mean, we could have flushes. That's about it. I'm not really finding a whole lot of other effective nut hands that are actually better than ours. So that's, that's the problem we're running into here is that at best we have a flush. And uh, we actually have a flush, although it's not a particularly good one. So let's move forward me so like what are they i don't know if he plays five four five four seems like a good candidate for a bluff because you block the boats but i mean i don't really have any boats so they're kind of irrelevant blockers <laughs> it's it's an interesting spot is he ever doing this with worse for value definitely don't think so if he had an eight i think he just calls my raise on the river if he has a straight he'd call my raise if he has the very few worse flushes he would just call my raise so ace eight i probably think just call so queen eight he has a lot of boats then he has ace x of hearts king x of hearts and yeah i'm losing to all those hands <laughs> this guy put me in the tank for about five minutes i five minutes came off the break clock because i was trying like i said before to take my time really think through it past me might have just not taken so long and then ended up calling present day me was like yeah just because he's good doesn't mean he can just pull bluffs out of thin air he still has to find some bluffs and i could not put him on any i really couldn't so i ended up folding we don't see his hand we never will know what he had but if he did somehow find a bluff very well done and uh he got me to fold a flush knowing that i could not have a boat here in this spot fun spot and i, I generally agree with most of her analysis in this scenario now she says she wants to try to find the opponent's bluffs, right? So what hands make sense to bluff? Well, maybe something like king of hearts seven, king of hearts six, right? These are all hands that may decide to throw out a random bet on the turn because it went check, check. Maybe any random hand with a seven or a six that does not have a pair, right? Uh, maybe it has random club draws that decides to run the bluff. Now, a lot of people do not try to bluff with clubs in the spot, quite often correctly, because in this scenario, they want you to have clubs. So if you if they have clubs, that means it's less likely that you have clubs that will automatically fold. So definitely a weird spot. Um, Ashley definitely points out on the fact that 5-4 would normally be a good bluffing hand because it blocks all houses, but it doesn't really matter here, right? So in this scenario, I think the opponent wants to mainly block good flushes. I would presume, right? Given that's the best hand that Ashley can have within reason. So she, the, uh, the opponent wants to have the ace of hearts, king of hearts, maybe jack of hearts. So if they have those hands with pretty much anything else, those are reasonable bluffing candidates. However, a lot of people are not going to take those and turn them into bluffs on the river. First off, what should a reasonably good GTO range look like for the opponent out of position in this spot for a small bet size? Well, if they're very, very good, they'll have a tiny portion of super nuts, like full houses, then they'll have a bunch of marginal made hands, like pocket sixes, like Ashley said. Then they'll have a tiny portion of bluffs, just total air balls. And then whenever they bet small in the river and you raise, they'll shove with all their nuts. And then a few of their bluffs slash thin value hands that have good blockers. 
if they're very, very good. So in order to find a call here, we need to ensure the opponent has enough bluffs in their range, and that essentially means we need the opponent to be very, very good. Is the opponent very, very good? I don't know. That's a read you're going to have to make. If you slotted me into a super high roller tournament against the best players in the world, I'm probably just going to call here because really 9-7 of hearts blocks some of the flushes they could have, right? Um, although they are going to show you a boat still quite adequately. But in most games against most players, I think this is a very good fold. And we don't get to see what the opponent has this time. For all we know, the opponent ran a sick bluff. But if you've watched enough videos on this YouTube channel, and probably Ashley's as well, because it sounds like she used to call a lot in the past, um, people just don't show up with bluffs whenever they load all their money in on the river into a smaller medium pot. Whenever they check raise or bet and then re-raise, they just have a really, really good hand most of the time. Now, the problem is we're getting some pot odds, but in this spot, we're not even getting that good of pot odds. We have to put in 90 to try to win, what, 250? Something like that. So we're not even getting that good of pot odds. And unless the opponent's just an absolute savage, then I think this is just a good fold. I think Ashley played it great. And she lost some chips, but she actually didn't lose all that many. So good job, good work. And that's gonna be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a quick favor. Click the like and subscribe buttons down below. Also click the notification bell and make a point to check out Ashley's channel at youtube.com slash Ashley Sleeth. Good luck, have fun, and please, please remember, if we've learned one thing here, whenever they want to put all their money out on the river, you should probably fold. Unless you told them you're going to fold ahead of time by watching all these videos. Don't try this against me.